This is a Get Hired RDH 10-minute training session with your dental hygiene job hunting personal trainer, Doug Perry. And now, here's Coach Perry. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, thanks for tuning in again this week for our Get Hired RDH weekly uh, job hunting tips, your training session for the week. This week, I wanted to focus on the most 10 most common interview questions. And there was a website that I came across called glassdoor.com. It's kind of a career development site for, for people looking for information about how to find jobs and where to find them. And, and I think they even post jobs on there. Um, anyway, their users will log in and report back to them what questions they were asked in job interviews, just as a curiosity, I think, and, and also f- to help people prepare for interviews a little bit better. And so some of the questions that come back are pretty pretty out there, pretty weird. Uh, so I thought I'd throw a couple of those at you real quick. Uh, the first one is, if you were to get rid of one state in the United States, which would it be and Why? kind of out there question. Uh, the second one was, what songs best describe your work th- work ethic? Hmm, I have to think about that one. Uh, what two celebrities would you choose as your parents and why? I'm not sure what they're after with that one. <laughs> That's a little bit, a little bit strange. But anyway, I th- it gets really weird from there, <laughs> even weirder if you can believe that. Um, but I think it's pretty evident that most pl- employers or at least some employers like to kind of gauge your reaction to one or two unanticipated questions in the hopes that it either trips you up a little bit or puts you off guard a little bit and makes you uh, respond in a way that they're able to gain some kind of a deep psychological insight into your personality. That's the only thing I can kind of think of, but I I think that's uh, largely what they're after. Back when I was, uh, I think I was in college actually, I was applying for a job and I had someone ask me, if you were in a circus, what role would you feel the most comfortable in? Uh, the ringmaster, the lion tamer, the tightrope walker, or the juggler? I had no idea how to answer that. I just take my best shot at it. I think I, I, think I guessed the tightrope walker because I wanted to be a person that was perceived as being daring and, and a risk taker and, and a person that was willing to put themselves out there or something like that. Anyway, there's, there's always going to be, not always, but a lot of times there's going to be a question that's just off the wall, just weird, and you just kind of have to anticipate that that's going to happen, and there really is no right or wrong answer or way to answer them uh, correctly. I think there's oftentimes just, they're just looking for your response and kind of trying to figure, figure you out a little bit. So don't take them too seriously and just answer them the best that you can. Fortunately, though, most employers will stick to many of the the same old trusted true interview questions. Glassdoor.com also has a list of those that they've done and have studies on. And and so I've come up with a list uh, based on their list of the top 10 most commonly asked interview questions. And I think this will really help kind of prepare you as you think about these for your, your job interview. But the key really to answering these questions really depends on you and how you sell yourself and how you put your personal brand out there and how you kind of mix that in with your responses. There's a really uh, kind of an art to that a little bit, but you just got to kind of know exactly what it is that is a differentiate, what your differentiators are, your personal brand, and, and just kind of keep honing in on those. Keep, keep, um, keep reiterating those and, and saying them in different ways as you respond to these questions. So in other words, it's not really uh, necessarily about telling the interview what they want to hear. A lot of people do that. You don't want to focus on that. You don't want to say, mm, what are they thinking? What, are, what kind of response do they want? I need to give them what they want. No, you don't want to do that. You want to give them exactly who you are, what differentiates you, what makes you unique. That's how, do you, how you answer interview questions and come across as a person who is different, who is special. That's the type of person most people are looking for. So figure out how to do that, learn and practice. First question, why did you leave or are you leaving your last job? People leave jobs for all different kinds of reasons. So the best way to answer this is just to pick a reason that is the least threatening, that's going to be, uh, that's not going to be a red flag for them and just, just go with that. You know, I wanted to leave, I wanted to further advance my career or I'm looking for something a little bit closer to home. Those are good non-threatening answers. 
Question number two, what is your biggest weakness? Now, this one I wrote an entire article on over at GetHiredRDH.com because there's a lot of different ways that you can respond to this that are really effective. But the, my favorite way, the best way, I think, is to turn the negative into a positive. For example, at times I can be a bit of a perfectionist. Or you could say something like, sometimes I'm a little overly optimistic. Those are good responses that are not going to be a, a really bad weakness that makes you look bad or, or uh, that they're going to feel threatened or, or worried about in any way. Third question, what are your strengths? This sounds easy, but it makes people a little bit squeamish to answer it because they don't want to sound over the top about themselves. And so you want to focus your answer on this one, on your brand, your personal brand. What makes you different? What makes you unique? What makes you stand out? And so you just want to give uh, them a quick example and then a little, a little story. For example, just say something like, uh, I'm great with kids. And the other day I had uh, a mother that was a patient and she had a small child with her who was very upset and I was able to kind of help smooth out the situation the, the child was uh, was happy at the end and, and blah 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 just tell your story next question is why should we hire you hopefully you've done a little bit of homework and you checked out their website their Facebook page or some other way to, to learn a little bit more about this particular practice that's interviewing you because you can find out all kinds of little nuggets of information about them such as their mission statement their philosophy maybe some new equipment that they have and you can call attention to this in your interview uh, and in this particular question you can you can say well hey I noticed on your website that you really care about the comfort uh, of each patient well I do too in fact, the other day, I had a man in that hadn't seen a dentist in eight years, and so he was terrified. And so blah, 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 blah. That's how I would answer that question. Just focus in on, um, on something that you learn from, from checking them out. Next question is, what motivates you? Here you want to be genuine. They are trying to find out a little bit about you, your personality, what your drives are, and those kinds of things. And so just be really genuine and give them something that is hopefully a little bit related to how you care about your patients. Uh, for example, I absolutely love the moment when I can see the light go off in their eyes, when they finally seem to get and understand the importance. And it just gives me a charge to know that I made a difference for them. That's what I, that's what I live for. That's what I'm motivated by. Next question, where do you see yourself in five years from now? A lot of people might just say, well, working for you. That would be <laughs> the simple answer. But dive in a little bit deeper and talk about relationships with patients and how you want to you want to see that grow and you want to see the growth and development of the staff and you want to be a part of that. You want to, you want to be able to be an influencer among the staff and be able to make a difference five years from now. Next question, tell me about a mistake that you've made and how you've handled it. Now, you want to be honest here, but you also want to just find a really small mistake. So, but the most important thing about this question is showing that you learned from the mistake. Talking about what, you, what it is that you took away from that experience. For example, oh, I was greeting a patient the other day and I mispronounced her name, or I got her name wrong. Uh, she corrected me, but, and we were embarrassed, but... Now, as a matter of habit, I review the names of patients that are scheduled each day in the morning to make sure that I don't mispronounce their names. That's so important to me. Next question, tell me about an accomplishment that you're most proud of. Here you wanna make sure that you've come to the interview with three or maybe four examples or stories of accomplishments, things that you've done that have made a difference in the office or, or the place that where you, where you work things that were you're able to see that there was a change because of your influence or your your participation in it in some way so come with three or four examples and stories of that and and share them and in particular this this particular part of the interview they're asking about the accomplishment that you're most proud of next question is how do you handle a situation where a patient is not satisfied well, think this through. Think ahead of time. Think before you get to the interview. How would you handle that sort of situation? Or how have you handled it in the past? What's the right way? You, you just want to mostly just think, think that through so that you're prepared to answer it from your own experience. So I always say, um, be specific about how you would respond and then finish it with a story of how you did respond to somebody or how you saw that someone else on your staff maybe responded. And so that's how you think is the right way to handle uh, an unsatisfied or unhappy patient. 
And then number 10, the final question that almost everybody asks at the end of an interview, what questions do you have for me? And a lot of job seekers will use this to say, well, what's the pay? What's the benefits? What's this? What's that? All kind of focused on what's in it for me. But it's much, much better. And and don't get me wrong, you should ask those questions. You should know what the pay is. You should find that out. But you really want to get across that you are a serious job seeker. That you're looking for... Uh, ways that you can help and improve the office. And so you maybe want to ask him a question related to that. What are you looking for in a successful candidate for this job? What is it that is is most impressive to you about um, a great dental hygienist? Those are kind of questions that help them see you as a professional who is very serious about the job. You're not just going to go there and show up and and uh, collect your check, punch in, punch out, that kind of thing. You're there to be an influencer, a, a, a great an employee, these kinds of things. That's what you want to focus on. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks so much again for, for tuning in for this week's training session. I hope you have a great week. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ever give me a call. Send me an email. I love hearing from you, and I love being able to help you out and landing a great dental hygiene job. Have a great week. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to the Get Hired RDH 10-Minute Training Session. For more information, visit GetHiredRDH.com or you can reach Coach Perry at 801-683-9664 or Doug at GetHiredRDH.com.